Hi everyone, I just wanted to come and talk to you about this piece of equipment today. So this is known as a Wreck and Wreck. So that is R-E-K-E-N-R-E-K. -E -E and it is a Dutch word and it means calculation frame. It doesn't mean counting frame. So amongst other things today, I want to dispel some myths that a Google search may bring up for you. When you're searching about this, look up what this word means from Dutch to English and be careful. It doesn't mention the word counting. And that is incredibly important because calculating is not counting and counting does not lead to calculating. So I want to have a look at this bit of apparatus. It's also not an abacus. So the trouble is when we accept things and we don't question things, we can end up not knowing what we don't know. It is our job to question and it is our job to dig. And then the amount of confidence we get in ourselves by digging and asking questions, you find that will grow significantly. Sometimes we think it will frighten us and we'll lose our confidence and it's quite the opposite. But the thing I want to have a look at today is if you are using this equipment, now, first of all, you do not need this equipment to teach maths. Don't let anybody tell you that you do. It's not cheap and it's not essential in any way. Is it a nice to have? Perhaps. Nothing wrong with the equipment, but you don't need it. Now, what I'm going to have a look at here is something linked to what I posted on the group yesterday. So this was, I've lost a cube. Here we go. So this is what I posted on the group. I actually posted it this way orientation wise, but of course maths doesn't have an orientation. So we've got this, okay? So there is five and five. Now, can you see that there, for those of you who've been doing work on five and 10 frames, that is a five frame, that is a five frame, and together two five frames equal a 10 frame. It's really important because base 10 is the system that we all operate in pretty much everywhere in the world now, and that's how our number system works. So I want to have a look at a number six, for example. And the great thing about this arrangement, and if you do, if you've done work with me, you'll know they always do this. We do a finished five, and then we would start another five. Now we would do this with a five frame in the background. I'm going to show that in a moment. But if we'd done that and we had a five frame and then one of the next five frame, this is what six can look like. Now, as soon as you get onto that second lot of five, you can also look at six in what we call the twos pattern. I know the NCETM, the National Centre for Excellence in Teaching Maths, calls that the pairwise pattern. And I'm not quite sure why, because I think if we've got a fives pattern, surely a twos pattern makes sense as well. So you can have them like that if you want. It might be a little bit more pleasing to have them like this. But at the moment, we haven't got the five frame underneath, so it's a little bit harder to see. But you could have a six pattern like this. But I just want to stick at the moment with the idea of a five and a one. Let's have a look at that in an even easier way. So here, can you see the minute? Mine's quite scruffy because I use it a lot. But this is my five frame here. I'd always start off with just a five frame. Lots of you have done training with me on this. But at this stage, once we get to number six, six is a finished five and one of the next five. So that shows really clearly because you can see we've got to the end of here and we filled in all the spaces and there's one there. Okay, so by the same token, and we could put these, of course, let's do this, could put these on here, like this, because it's showing it doesn't matter. Yeah, it could be strawberries. So using the frame is really, really important because you can see what's there, what's not there, when the five is finished and so forth. In time, our children will learn to recognize the image and they can justify its five by looking for the three and the two, but that isn't gonna to happen too soon, so don't worry about that so much at the moment. Now, back to our wreck and wreck. To me, it makes perfect sense that if a child has been studying five and 10 frames, which is what we would pretty much all maths approaches and all maths schemes talk about now, and I would 100% go along with that, it makes a lot more sense to look at the 10 frame here. So if I want to think about six, I've got a finished five and one of the next five. And what's nice about a wreck and wreck is unlike the cubes where you could just keep adding more, 
and not knowing you'd got to five necessarily, depending on your level of your, your understanding at that point. Here, it changes to a white. We've got one five in red and one five in white. So we've got a finished five and one of the next five. And as we showed before, of course, that six as well at the right time can be like this. It doesn't make sense to me to show them that. Maybe you could do this later, but if you've been doing five frames, a finished five and one of the next five, a finished five and one of the next five, in time, we are going to need to think about 10 as being linear. But the age that children are being introduced to these is way before that stage. And most of the children being introduced to Rec and Rex, we've got schools that have either been given them or they've ordered them and spent hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on them. And there hasn't been lots and lots of work on perceptual subitizing, conceptual subitizing, five frames and building up to this. So you will end up with children who count in ones on this because they don't have another skill. People call it a counting frame and reinforce that. And even if they are doing work in their schemes, in activities with you where they're seeing a five frame, you're not showing them a five frame here because a five frame ends at five and then we have the next five. And it doesn't matter whether you are, let's look at number four, for example, four there, it's one less than five. The five frame isn't finished yet. And four can also be two and two because we've got the four there. If you watch any videos on how to use a wreck and wreck, people like Amy Howe will talk about how you need to do things with one push. You don't count them out. But then her training and other people's training doesn't go explain how children would know how many to push without counting them. So what I want to do here is just reinforce these ideas about don't just accept things. Ask questions, challenge, is your maths connected? Does it make sense? Would your children be able to get a handful of strawberries at snack time? And particularly if you give them little five frames, would they be able to lay them out and say, oh, look, I've got six and the other child might lay theirs out. And perhaps when they lay their strawberries out, I know you'll be counting when I do this. If you've done work with me, we just sing a little song so we don't automatically count. But they lay theirs out like this and they can see they've got one more. Their number looks like this. Look, it's got a four and a three in it or a five and a two in it. Whereas this number has got a five and a one in it. Or you could look at a three and a three. There's lots of things you could look at, but they're not the same quantity. I'd have to have one more strawberry to equal yours. Or if I ate one of my strawberries, it would be equal. And there's other patterns as well. Like we said, the six could be like this. The seven could be like this and we've done the twos. So question what you are doing. Do not blindly follow a scheme. Use the scheme. Use the equipment. The knowledge is in the beholder. It is not the tool itself. This can't teach maths. These can't teach maths. These can't teach maths. You teach the maths.